Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. Uh, this is your Yoga Solutions Live on this um, sunny autumn day, 20th of October 2020. Uh, I hope you're doing fantastically wherever you are and having a nice time and feeling good in yourself. Um, yeah, so Yoga Solutions, uh, it's a uh, it's interesting. I, I didn't have a lot of time this morning to uh, come up with something, um, and and uh, what what I what I was about to say. Uh, what's interesting is that um, this idea of yoga solutions implies that there's a problem, um, uh, and maybe there's not. You know, maybe maybe you're happy and centered and uh, getting full value out of your life and. Um, so no solution required, just support, support in, in what you're doing. And uh, you know, maybe it's the way for most of the world. I, I, know, I know it wasn't true for me. It wasn't true for me when I came back to yoga as an adult in, in my um, early 30s. Um, and, and for me, the, the yoga has um, given me a chance to, it's a bit corny, but find myself. <laughs> um, it wasn't that I wasn't there, but I was there suffering and in, uh, suffering physically and existentially. And it turned out that the physical was a um, reflection of the existential, as in uh, my body hurt because I was twisting myself out of shape on, on many levels. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the yoga helped me find my truer self, uh, the self that isn't being dictated to by this experience of suffering. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've got, I've, I've developed my yoga world, my yoga business, my yoga um, approach with this background sort of sense that um, most people are suffering on some level. It can, it can be subtle, and, and for most people it is subtle. Um, and you're, you know, you're getting on with your life, and um, there's the, this goal to achieve, so you fully occupy yourself with that. You get to the goal, doesn't quite do the job, so there's, an, there's the next goal, and so on and so forth. And this, this is life. Um, and perhaps that's what I'm doing with my teaching, you know, maybe, maybe my mission to um, bring this methodology that um, gives you direct access to, to how to, um, gives you direct access to the somatic experience of not being pulled out of shape. <laughs> and again, I'm talking on many levels. I'm not talking about just the body. The body is uh, the body kind of reflects that thing, that twistedness that is going on on in the inside. Um, to to be able to access the potential freedom, yeah, uh, we we need to be able to go there. We need to be able to recognize it in the first place, and that's quite often the difficulty, you know. We start to go into our body work and we notice complications and um, we get even more entrenched in the idea that the body is misbehaving in some fashion. Um, it's just what happens. It's, it's kind of the baseline uh, animal kind of re reaction to, to injury. So, But we have this cognitive ability and rationalization and reasoning that we pile on top of the experience to to um and, and that has the tendency to keep us stuck in it you see so anyway I, I don't know what i'm rambling on about to be honest um it's i think uh, yeah it was something something to do with um yoga solutions <laughs> what, what am i trying to solve and what is it I'm trying to solve? I'm, I'm trying to solve misdirection. I'm trying to solve misunderstanding. Uh, not in the, you know, uh, in myself, in myself. And, uh, but from, uh, but what I've discovered in the process is um, 
the misunderstanding can be redressed, not externally really, it doesn't really work, because that's adding more interpreted ideas onto the experience, uh, externally interpreted ideas onto the experience. What, what leads to solutions to these kind of background discomforts is the ability to put that part of yourself aside, the, the, the preset, the programmed part of yourself aside, and be directly in experience without prejudice, without prejudgment. And um, that, that's a trick that philosophers and um, spiritual work, light workers and whatever have been trying to access for millennia, you know? That's what, uh, that's the whole whole journey of, the whole spiritual journey of, of development. Um, doesn't have to be spiritual, but the, the whole personal development journey. Um, so how do you do this? And, and that's where the solutions come in. Because, because what, I, what I've found and what I've noticed helps with other people as well, because it worked for me, I, I try and guide other people into the same thing so that they can have their own direct experience, is quite simply the way that I, the, the thing that I teach, this total immersion of the witness, of, the, of your presence into the sensory perceptions, the direct sensory perceptions. Now, you, know, you can, it, it, it's, and it's, it is rife with, with interpretation, you see. So, for example, um, the direct sensory perception of contact. You'd think that that's a universally understandable thing, but there's the contact where you are trying to feel a texture has a completely different quality to the contact where you're trying to um, support yourself. For most people, the 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 the, the contact that goes on when some part of you is hurting is completely different to the contact that you have when you are relaxed and don't feel heavy, when you feel light in your body. Um, and almost without exception, someone going into their direct sensory perception of their contact, the act of doing so will make them engage in a particular way that interferes with it. Uh, so it's, so it's, it's still quite a trick. But that's where the second part of my instructions um, come in. The, the, uh, there's an old adage that rings true, um, that is the, which is the, that the mind follows the breath. And uh, yeah, and you see that in all yoga practice, that's in all normal yoga practice, where you, you sort of inhale and you come up into space. Uh, so the mind is following that sort of arrival of uh, uplift that happens when you are supported from within by the pressure of the breath. So, but that's not what you're feeling. What you're feeling is, I breathe up. And the release of the breath when you let it go, you, uh, we stop being present. We stop being present to space and we go within. And the result is a downward collapse. So, so it's the mind doing this. The mind is deciding to be up when you breathe in and the mind is deciding to be down when you breathe out. Um, and one of the most revelatory discoveries I made with my um, uh, study of yoga and in the Scaravellian spied approach. Um, and it had a load of anatomy behind it, and a lot of understanding about the physiology of the breath and whatever. But um, essentially, obviously, when the breath leaves, it actually travels up because the emptying of the lungs. And when the breath arrives, it's actually a downward movement of the diaphragm as part of the action. 
So, and, and if you change your mind, if you decide that that's how the breath moves, then if you can find a way of being with space as you release the breath, and being with the ground as you receive the breath, the world, told, the world turns upside down in that you relax to breathe and when you release the breath you find yourself in space uh, the outcome is all sorts of physiological benefits like the um, thoracic spine gets to um, release its curve a little with the release of the breath so the arrival of the breath, instead of it being something you lift, it's something that arrives to support you in the secondary curve. So you relax your back, you relax your neck, and the breath comes in to support you. So you're, you're within as the breath arrives. And then when you let go of the breath, give it away to the ground and allow that to travel up through you in the same direction that the air travels, in the same direction that the fluid of the body travels when the diaphragm releases. So if you allow yourself to be with space, essentially, as you let go of the breath, then you get the rather um, oppositional experience of letting go of tension and being upright. It's only oppositional because of where the mind goes, you see. So um, the, the whole of my approach, if instead of the mind directing things, um, well, I, I get the mind to reverse its direction just to experience something other. And then there's um, a third thing that happens where, and you can join me if you like, I'm just doing a sitting twist. The mind can be occupied with the direct sensory impressions of contact and here's a, the simplest of instructions that can that can occupy the mind make it equal now what does that mean well if i'm sitting back here on my the back of my base um, i haven't got equal touch i've got i've got a heaviness on the back base and a kind of reaching for the contact with my arms and a reaching for the contact with my legs that keeps me um, tense. So make it equal. How do I do that? Well, simplest way is to move my weight around until every point of contact, including my hand, my hands on my lap, is about equal. So that's equal weight. And then there's a kind of responsiveness. If I, if I go too far forwards, eventually my hands start to push. If I didn't have my hands there, if I go too far forwards, eventually my legs would start to push. Um, if I am on the front of the base, I would something on the inside would try and make the back of the base pull towards the ground. So allowing all of that, allowing the contact to be responsive because you know if I'm here and, and I feel like I'm not allowed to do anything I, I can't change anything <laughs> so allowing my engagement so for example if my weight is back over my base I can use my touch to pull myself forwards so there's plenty for the mind to do you know? I can use my touch to pull myself forwards the instruction is simple make it equal and when I get to a place where the contact is equal, the job is to let go, but let go to receive the breath. And if in that released wave-like response, it moves me or it can complete its cycle, at the top of the breath I arrive in equal touch, then the subsequent release of the breath is the same, except I let go away from wherever I am in space into my touch. This, this exploration of 
letting go into what is. So, you know, um, I let go, the weight's on the back of my base, the breath comes in. And I allow things to change. The, the body is, a, there's a presumption in my work that the body is intelligent. And when it's doing something, like holding tension, it's trying to achieve something, it's trying to support you, it's trying to move something, perhaps, until your touch is equal. So that you can relax, which is a perfectly natural thing to want to do. So the wave of the arrival of the breath, from my touch, as I surrender to it, will bring me to a place of equality, and because of that, to a place in space. And then when I let go, once again, to release the breath, the same thing is allowed. And I find myself releasing the breath into a relationship to space. The only thing the mind needs to concern itself with is is my touch equal? You know, when I get when I'm when I'm not in the chaos of allowing movement um, in harmony with the breath, the only thing I need to concern myself with when I'm wanting to relax, when I'm wanting to be still, is is it equal? And if there's an equal relationship to my base, or or an equalizing relationship to my base then because of this reciprocal relationship between the space above me and the space below me, I can start to just leave my base behind, approximately equal, and allow myself from within to relate to the space behind me, either side of me, through the breath and its release so that I can continue being in space. So now the mind is occupying itself with the space that I'm in. And it's a, it's a physical engagement. It's a direct sensory reciprocal involvement with the space, the space around me not just where I already feel it, but in the places that are hidden from space. So, if there's a holding in the base of the skull, back of the neck, I need to meet that space and breathe, so that I can feel supported by it. If there's a tightness in one side of my neck compared to the other, Instead of trying to stretch it, pull it around, from my neck, I explore the space either side of me with a quality of listening so that the mind is in directly engaging, with the quality of tasting so that deeper responses can happen, with the quality of the breath. Until, guess what? I have an equal relationship to the space behind, to either side, and the space in front with the release, so that I can begin to trust and lean into the space above me through the arrival of the breath. And if I can stay in that relationship to the space above me as I release the breath, perhaps I arrive in equal touch beneath as well. The mind is still occupied. And it's occupied with the act of making things equal. The down and the up, the front and the back, the side and the side. Through the arrival of the breath and the release of the breath. 
which isn't an on-off thing. It's not just two things to attend to. There are an infinite number of incremental stages as the as one breath turns into the what one cycle of the breath merges into transforms into the other. So the mind is it completely has to be completely totally immersed in this simple task of making my relationship to the space below and my relationship to the space above equal from the released arrival of the breath and the released let go of the breath. And in the process of the mind being steadily immersed in this task, I can notice little tensions like that tension in my wrist and let it go. See if I can let it go. But now the mind's taken over, so back to task, make it equal as I meet the space above and below with the arrival of the breath. And as I let go from the center, I can release in both directions, above and below, equally, as I surrender the breath. And the outcome for my body is it gets a chance to find new relationships that wouldn't have been available to me otherwise. What happened for me there was some ribs that have been perennially stuck, um, kicked in. Not because I tensed my ribs, but because my relationship to heaven and earth was equal. So I had support from both directions. I could lean into that support when I let go of tension and the breath. And on a straightforward physiological level, the ribs get involved with that. And uh, because the relationships were harmonious, the ribs were able to and had the space to move more than they would have done if I just made my ribs work. See? <sighs> Now, what's that got to do with what I was saying at the beginning? Well, right now, I feel different. I feel different than I did when I arrived. I feel more spacious, less cluttered by the machinations of the thinking mind. I turned up worrying about what I was going to share, what, worrying about content, um, whether it would be useful or not, whether it would be relevant to other people or not. So I did what I do and took myself into practice. And I've been working this way long enough to be able to speak it as I do it. So the outcome for me is I feel quieter, Physically more centered, more grounded, more spacious in the middle, um, a little stronger there because I'm able to release into it. Open the heart, less complicated in the neck, all sorts of things. Uh, the, the, the result were, wasn't me fixing my body. That's not how solutions work. The result is in stepping out of my normal experience, my normal repeated in other words, practiced experience of being into something broader. And the way I got myself to go there was by giving the mind the simple task of relating to the world around me through breath and release in a way that would do the job. <laughs> See, there was very little of what I said had anything to do with adjusting the body. All you needed to do, all you need to do is stay, keep the mind steadily with the world around you through the breath and its release, and you will naturally 
move from without to within, within to without, until within and without have harmonious relationships. Until above and below have harmonious relationships. So that everything between those things, between within, without, between above and below, gets a chance to reorganize and rearrange and find different relationships that so would be outside of the remit of my usual experience. Yeah. That, that's what yoga is about for me. It's about um, opening myself to states of being that um, would otherwise be inaccessible. Good. So um, I have no idea if that was any use to anyone. Um, I hope so. If you enjoyed it, then um, please share it around. Um, you know, if you, uh, sharing this work, um, other people sharing this work has more power than me promoting it. Um, I, I, I'm I'm in it for my own experience, and I'm in it to uh, to bring the potential of this work to anyone that's looking for this. So um, if you can, um, if you enjoyed it, then do share it on. It will stay on Facebook for, a, for at least a week. Well, at least a few days. And then it transfers onto the Aquaviva website for my members. Um, yeah. So what I've got going on, I'm, I'm fully immersed in this uh, current online CPD course, um, Envirosomatic Intelligence One. It's about unifying our relationships to earth and space through the wave of the breath and um, how different parts of the body, what I'm on in the course at the moment is that how different parts of the body, <clears throat> how the wave originates and uh, depending on how you're relating so that we can sort of find channels and movements between parts of ourselves that are released and natural and it um, leads to kind of spirally wave-like movements into things. Uh, that's what I'm currently on and we're on course workshop two which is all about the neck and throat, how to um, allow the neck and throat to to uh, release naturally into more, more harmonious relationships through breath and, and release. Um, and that's this Sunday, you can drop in if there's space. I think there is. Uh, I've got quite a few people on the course, but there's one or two drop in spaces. And you can always book um, a view only place if, if there's not. So there you go. And then view only places are half price. Other than that, there's my classes. I, I have one later on today uh, um, at 11.30, another one at tomorrow at 11, and Monday evenings I do an intermediate class for people that are um, a little bit familiar with what I do and want to go quite a bit deeper with it. Um, the, having, uh, the next Saturday workshop, I'm not sure whether that is. Um, it's on the diary somewhere. Uh, there's usually two a month, so there'll be one more this month. Um, possibly the last Saturday, I don't know, let me see. I can look on the diary, one second. Uh, yeah, it's not this weekend. Oh, I, I, I don't know, it's on the website anyway. There's, a, there's another Saturday morning retreat, which is uh, two and a half hours. Okay, my dears, um, much love to you. Thank you for um, uh, watching and feel free to share and I shall see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.